Sweet facts about Guns N' Roses. Ego Game Before forming the band, Axl Rose and Izzy Stradlin were members of a band called Hollywood Rose. In 1984, Stradlin was roommates with Tracy Guns, who was a member of the band LA Guns. The two groups came together, and the abandoned band's names were used to create the fusion band Guns N' Roses. Though to be fair, given the fact that they named their bands after themselves even then, we're not surprised that their heads would later grow a bit inflated with success. Your 15 minutes are up. Original bassist Old Beach lasted barely a month with the band. After their first ever show in March 1985, Beach was fired. He was replaced by Duff McKagan, who we can safely say lasted a bit longer than Beach. In all but name. On the 4th of June 1985, the band officially recruited drummer Steven Adler and lead guitarist Slash. Interestingly, both men had been in Hollywood Rose with Axl Rose and Izzy Stradlin. This really just seems like an unofficial Hollywood Rose reunion. Calling it the Charlie Brown tour would have been copyright infringement. Despite confirming their lineup, Guns N' Roses faced disaster when they toured the West Coast in June 1985. The tour was poorly organized and on one occasion, the band's two vans broke down on the road to Seattle, their final destination. They were forced to abandon their equipment to hitchhike. Small wonder they later dubbed it the Hell Tour. Would you say they're bad to the bone? Early on in their career, the band gained a reputation for their wild lifestyle and outrageous behavior, to the point where former hard partiers and labelmates Aerosmith had to avoid spending time with them if they wanted to stay sober. Guns N' Roses even became known as the most dangerous band in the world. Less money for more independence. By 1986, Guns N' Roses began to draw offers from record labels. During this time, Geffen Records offered them a contract with $75,000 in advance money attached. The band accepted after turning down an offer from Chrysalis Records which had been worth twice that much. Unlike Geffen, however, Chrysalis had insisted on changing the band's image and their musical style. To be honest, we can't imagine anyone thinking they could just tell a bunch of hard rockers in their prime what they could and could not do. Brits first. In 1987, Guns N' Roses released their first singles. Despite being an American band, their first single was released in the UK. It's So Easy was released there on the 15th of June 1987, but not anywhere else. In fact, the first US single that Guns N' Roses released was Welcome to the Jungle in October. No, not the Marvel character. Welcome to the Jungle ended up being featured in the Deadpool, a 1988 film which was one of several starring Clint Eastwood as the hard-nosed cop Dirty Harry Callahan. Guns N' Roses even had cameo appearances in the film. Out with old, in with new. In 1990, drummer Steven Adler struggled to perform, thanks to his drug addictions. When the band recorded Civil War, Adler's faulty drumming meant that they did nearly 30 takes of the song. He was fired from the band that same year and was replaced by Matt Sorum. No illusions about our success. Guns N' Roses greatly expanded their musical range in 1991 with the release of their double album Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. Reaching number 1 and number 2 on the US charts, the albums were praised for their ambition, incorporating elements of blues, classical music, heavy metal, punk rock, and classic rock and roll into their hard rock style. Where do we go now? During the mid to late 1990s, Guns N' Roses didn't do much in regards to recording new albums. Each member of the band is given different reasons for why this was the case, such as internal squabbling, other musical projects taking precedence, and the departure of lead guitarist Slash in 1996. Inspiration from Agitation According to Axl Rose, the inspiration for Welcome to the Jungle was a homeless man who accosted him and his friend when they first arrived in New York City off the bus. The man screamed you know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby. You're gonna die. We hope that Guns N' Roses later tried to find the man and buy him lunch in gratitude. Let them in, quick. In 2012, Guns N' Roses classic lineup, Axl Rose, Duff McKagan, Dizzy Reed, Slash, Matt Sorum, Steven Adler, and Izzy Stradlin, were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It also happened to be the first year that they were eligible. From low to high again. By the 2010s, Guns N' Roses' reputation for delaying or even abruptly cancelling their concerts was at an all-time low. 
However, in 2016, classic band members Slash and Duff McKagan reunited with the band at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. They went on to perform the Not In This Lifetime tour, which grossed over $480 million. That makes it the fourth highest grossing concert tour of all time. Accessory? On the 2nd of July 1991, just outside of Street Louis, Axel Rose once again lost his temper with disastrous results, a recurring trend for him on stage. Noticing a fan filming the show, Rose demanded that security remove the camera. When his demands weren't met, Rose took matters into his own hands and assaulted the fan. Rose was pulled away, whereupon he walked off, ending the show abruptly. This caused the huge crowd to riot, leading to dozens of injuries. Rose narrowly avoided criminal charges. Foreshadowing for Chinese democracy? Incredibly, one of Guns N' Roses' classic songs, November Rain, took nearly 10 years to reach us. Released on Use Your Illusion 1 in 1991, Axl Rose was working on the song as early as 1983, according to Tracy Guns. We'll be back. Guns N' Roses' song You Could Be Mine appears famously in James Cameron's Terminator 2, Judgment Day, the movie that all Terminator fans remember and weep for as being the high-water mark of a long decrepit series. The movie makes an interesting pun on the band's name in one scene where the T-800 pulls out a shotgun from its hiding place, a box of roses. Well played, James. Was it an improvement? In 1987, Guns N' Roses held a concert in Atlanta. During the show, Axl Rose got himself in trouble when he attacked a security guard backstage. Rose was held by police despite the fact that he was in the middle of the show. One of the band's roadies had to go on stage and sing in Rose's place. Light him up. As successful as Guns N' Roses became, they were hardly doing well before the band kicked off. In fact, Axl Rose and Izzy Stradlin went to extreme measures to make a buck. They both signed up as guinea pigs for a UCLA study which required them to smoke cigarettes. To be fair, they were probably going to do that anyway, so might as well get paid for it. Oops. In 1993, Guns N' Roses released The Spaghetti Incident? which was an album comprised of punk and hard rock songs. However, it also contained a hidden cover of the song Look At Your Game, Girl which was originally written by none other than Charles Manson. Yes, that Charles Manson. Given Manson's crimes and imprisonment, various groups were outraged that Manson would be getting money from Guns N' Roses fans, which was nothing to sneeze at, given how popular the band was. The band apologized for their naive and innocent black humor and promised to donate all their performance royalties of that song to various sources such as the Doris Tate Crime Victims Bureau and a relative of one of the victims of Manson's followers. This is why people don't like you, dude. In 1988, Guns N' Roses released the single One in a Million, which was based on Axl Rose's less than pleasant experience coming to Los Angeles for the first time. However, the song provoked a huge controversy due to Rose's use of homophobic language and the N-word in the song. For his part, Rose did an interview with Rolling Stone to address the controversy. He embarked on a rant which began with him resenting the idea he can be told what to say or not say. He then claimed that the N-word doesn't necessarily mean black before pointing out that rap group N. W. A. used it all the time and no one got angry at them. Finally, presumably, because nobody was looking him in the eye by that point, Rose called out Bobcat Goldthwaite for insisting that the band use the N-word just for the sake of controversy. It's safe to say that One in a Million isn't hailed as a Guns N' Roses classic. Dear viewers, do not forget to subscribe, like and comment for the development of our channel. Stay with love.